a piece from the 70s He's by an American composer, George Rockberg. Never heard of. Oh, um, Rockberg. Uh, Rockberg. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Rock, Rockberg. Yeah, Rockberg. Yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, Rockberg, okay. yes. So, how did you delve this piece up? You know, he, he wrote a huge uh, selection of, uh, I think it's called 50 Caprice Variations. Hmm. And actually it's variations, but very far-fetched from the last, the 24th Caprice by Paganini. And they're, they are all miniatures like that, and some of them are really very special. And sometimes I play them in concert, and sometimes I use them as an anchor. The silence was deafening. Yes. I have to say so, uh, that that is always a, a risky thing to do because some publics don't expect something like that and then get sometimes very, um, not, not exactly noisy, but not that silent. And this silence is absolutely necessary, of course, for this kind of music. Absolutely. But you know Amsterdam, you know the whole... Of well, course, yeah, audience. I was not frightened. No, <laughs> no, no I so was much. counting on the public. Okay, second question. What violin did you play this on? This is the Stradivarius the Sleeping, Sleeping Beauty, Beauty with gut strings. Oh, that's it. That Na naked gut strings on the E and A and wound it on the D and G. Oh, on the A and A, uh, Darmstadt and the other two with uh, Stahl and Moore. No, actually, no. Uh, uh, the, those are, all of them are, are gut strings. Yeah. But the, oh, the upper ones, as you can see, they don't have the silvery yeah. woundings. Yeah. So this is also that, but there is silver yeah. around, and the E and A is really, you can touch, it's yeah. just gut, <laughs> natural, pure. It feels pure. very natural, yeah. yes. it's so soft, it's soft, yeah. smooth and soft. Too. Yes, they are still in a good state, and suddenly they start to, you know, have little bits and pieces yeah. coming off, and then it gets very uncomfortable. So how many days, weeks or months can you play on these gut I do change them. Uh, the E string at least, which is the most, of course, because it's the thinnest, it's the most delicate one, I change it almost every day. Is that right? Yes, Ooh. when when I play on cut. Yes. Yeah. Now, try. after the concert, immediately I have to change on yeah. metal again, so... Um, for. So what's your next plan, what's your next concert? Tomorrow I, I have a, a solo recital where I actually do play some of those Rockberg uh, pieces, but also some... Holliger, George Benjamin, and also Baroque. So I play with two violins, with a Baroque violin, and uh, with the Stradivarius on metal. Does it ask for a, a different approach or technique to play on God string? It um, is different. It's a little bit delicate to explain. You should just try yourself and you would see that it's, it's, it's not so easy. Um, first of all, we have, of course, the problem with the strings being not so stable reacting even more than metal strings to to Conditions. different temperatures which is very often a problem behind stage it could be very hot on stage suddenly they put the air conditioning that is all a big trouble and then it will be out of tune immediately especially for a piece like Mendelssohn where all three movements go into each other you can't even no time to adjust you cannot no. tune in between we also don't have the fine stimmer so I, I can't even tune secretly <laughs> during the piece, um, but that's uh, yeah, that's that's the not so practical side of it. Um, it has different ways of articulation, and it needs a little bit a different grip. It needs also a different way of putting your fingers on the left side, your left hand fingers. I always feel that you have to be much more precise in hitting the tone so that the overtones can actually develop and Precies. it's not so forgiving. Nee. Het is heel anders spelen op die darmsnaren dan op staande wondersnaren, want je, het is zo gevoelig voor temperatuur. Als je achter het podium bent, heb je gestemd en je komt in de zaal met mensen erin, andere vochtconditie. Uh, de airconditioning, het heeft zo meteen effect op je spel, op, de, op de, het zuiver zijn van die, van die viool. En je hebt ook geen fijn stemmetjes uh, onderaan. Uh, dus het is alleen maar onpraktisch. Eigenlijk, maar ja, het is wel zoals het ging in, in die tijd. This wonderful Mendelssohn concerto is uh, an innovative piece. I mean, it, it has technical innovations um, that were a first because he collaborated with Ferdinand David. Um, do you see these innovations? Do you hear these innovations compared with his uh, forerunners, his like Beethoven or Mozart? Uh, yes, of course. Um, already the beginning, there's no tutti 
at the beginning that's a complete innovation that he just starts right away with the solo violin today we don't even think about that anymore because we know this piece so well that's sometimes a disadvantage for pieces too well known and too much played people get uh, so used to those miracles and and new surprising things that they don't they're not surprised anymore they're just happy to hear what they expect um, then of course the cadenza which has been written out which normally at Mendelssohn's times should still be probably improvised um, and it's so much embedded in the piece that nobody would ever dare or think of playing another cadenza because it's it's just part of the piece um, yeah and then this incredible moto perpetuo last movement i think it's also a very very unusual thing very yes absolutely um to to fight a little bit the expectations and the comfort zone of the public i've been very happy to work with the Freiburger Baroque Orchestra and we recorded this piece and in that occasion I was going back to as many sources, original sources as I, as I could find and I was um, looking very closely, much more closely than I had ever done before into uh, the, the sources by Josef Joachim and, and Ferdinand David and there's also a third violinist who we know played this piece under Mendelssohn's um, conducting and we have of all three violinists we have the their parts and their fingerings and their articulations and also some comments like uh, Josef Joachim writes in his violin school about the major violin concerti what the composers would have absolutely wanted to be avoided and what was the main points so we also have a, a nice text about the Mendelssohn concerto where he exact, exactly describes exactly what one should uh, in any case avoid and it's very interesting to see that those are exactly the things that people still want to do naturally today after so many years so that that has been a very instructive and especially also the fingerings and articulations and um, it gave a huge indication to what uh, what the way was to play the violin at those times at least around Mendelssohn in that region in that area because of course in the French Belgian side other things already developed but um, Josef Joachim and Ferdinand David they all knew each other and they they did play very similarly similarly and in those parts that you can compare those three parts they are very very interesting fingerings especially a lot of portamenti so that means yeah, sliding yeah. yes and that's really very very obvious and it's also obvious that they had a certain way of doing it because in all three parts they are almost the same they agreed yes yeah. and they would for sure not you know talk about them and say okay let's put those in so that's only one thing i was uh, looking into with the freiburger baroque and i was very happy of course they, they write the vibrato has to be for sure not all the time and really only on selected notes and and this and also articulation and, and, and that um, forced me to rethink my own Mendelssohn which I have been playing since the age of 13 or 12 and it was actually a big step for me also to change all those fingerings and, and, and articulations and and uh, and also to get used to it because even you know um beauty has a lot to do with habits fashion and uh, i also was um, used to a little bit a different kind of playing um, but uh, it was so exciting to find out that another kind of aesthetic could be maybe much closer to the composer's ideas mm. and of course people um because it's such a super super well, well known piece um sometimes they come to the concert and they want to hear it exactly like on their uh, menu in cd or yeah, yeah. yeah and <laughs> they get uh, sometimes really shocked what yeah, they, they, they hear yeah. yeah but um i think that's the challenge i want to also not only give to myself but also to the public ik heb de bronnen, daar ben ik daar gegaan, zegt Isabelle Faust. Er zijn drie violisten in de tijd van Mendelssohn die met hem gewerkt hebben. Uh, Eén noemt ze de naam niet van, de andere is Ferdinand David, concertmeester van Leipzig, van de Kabanthuis. En Jozef Joachim, de beroemde violist die veel met Brahms heeft gewerkt. Ik heb de 
Hun solopartijen van het vioolconcert vergeleken met elkaar. En het is opvallend wat ze aan vingerzettingen daarin schrijven. Het is opvallend dat hoe ze schrijven weinig vibrato gebruiken. Ze zijn het ook allemaal eens over de portamenti, dus die, die, het glijden van de ene toon naar de andere. Ze zijn het opvallende wijs uh, over eens. Dus ik moest mijn hele gedachten, mijn hele ideeën uh, bijstellen over dat overbekende vioolconcert van Felix Mendelssohn. Schoonheid kent gewoontes en clichés, zegt ze. Dat is opvallend. We denken dat we dat willen doen zoals we dat altijd gedaan hebben. En daar schrijven ze ook over, die drie violisten. Kijk uit voor de, de valstrikken die zo evident zijn. Trap er niet in. Het is een bijna zo'n bijzonder vioolconcert, zegt Isabelle Faust. Alleen op de opening zonder een uh, toetie uh, orkestpassage meteen begint die viool. Heel bijzonder die solo cadence in het eerste deel die uitgeschreven is door de uh, componist. En ook heel bijzonder is dat... Mogen perpetu worden. Het gaat maar door, dat laatste deel. Dat draaft maar door met een enorme snelheid. Wat heerlijk. Dansant is dat. Oh, wow. okay. I, I wish I had your memory. I have to say this now. <laughs> is it how, your... you, how you memorize yeah. what I said? I wish I had your fingers and your breath and your musicality. <laughs> Tomorrow, the recital, where is it? In Berlin, in the, in the Pierre Boulez Salle. Oh, wonderful. The new hall uh, of 700. Uh, at six, yes. Yeah, well, I will safe be rushing back, yes. Thank you so much for today. Thanks so Have much. A wonderful recital tomorrow. Thanks for another wonderful, wonderful experience in your beautiful hall. Isabel Fout, thank you so much. Dit is het octet van Felix Mendelssohn, althans het tweede deel eruit. Met Christian Tetzlaff en Isabelle Faust en Lisa Batyashvili en Antje Weithaas viool, Rachel Roberts en Ori Kahn altviool, Tanja Tetzlaff en onze eigen Pirine Vierse cello. <laughs>